Today we're going to take a look at one of my favorite simple arrangement techniques that I use all the time in my more electronic based layering looping type music. I like to call it subtractive arrangement because it kind of reminds me of subtractive synthesis where we start with something really rich and full and shave it away down to something more interesting or more usable. In the case of subtractive arrangement, I start with the climax. I layer all of the things that work together really well vertically, and then I arrange outward, stripping away components as we go, trying different things together in isolation, just to see what I like. It's one of my favorite ways to work in a DAW, especially because you can see it so visually. And we're gonna take a look at some examples today. And it's a technique that I've actually used in my own music so many times because I do actually make music. I don't just talk about it on the internet. Today we'll take a look at a couple of examples. One is a very simple version. It's specifically made to demonstrate this in very clear and easy to understand terms. The other will be a track that I made using this very technique while not really thinking about it all that much. I just kind of used it instinctively. So it'll be your chance to kind of see it in the wild where it can roam free. I think one of the most important things to remember when using this technique is that you need solid ingredients to work with in the first place. So you have to kind of think beforehand about how these parts are going to fit together. And you need to think about leaving space for the other parts to occupy. You kind of have to think like a mix engineer that kind of will help you in the production of this and the arrangement as you go along. That way when everything is happening all at once, everything kind of has its own place to live. So even in this simple example that I've made here, I'm not saying that this is an absolute masterwork, but the parts do fit together. They work together vertically. That's a long reverb tail. So we have basic elements here like you would find typically in a track. We have a bass providing the foundation. We have a pad and a road sound providing a chord progression, which is kind of the core of the harmonic movement of the track along with the bass. And then we have these other three elements that can be kind of interchangeable and pulled in and pulled out at various times. The uh, melodic idea, which sounds like this. You'll see this one labeled descant, and if you don't know what that is, that's clearly from my background in church music as an organist. Descants are basically a counter melody that usually happens over the top, like the top sopranos will sing this line that kind of contrasts with the melody. So when the melody moves, the descant will hold and vice versa. And that's really an important concept in trying to figure out parts that fit together like a puzzle. So if you listen to just the descant and the melody together, you'll notice that there's space for each to occupy. Slower rhythmic movement in general for the descant. Taking a look a little bit more closely at this chord progression and the bass part together, really. So you notice that there is some contrary motion happening here. One of the things that I talk about a lot is writing linear harmonies. So rather than thinking about chord progressions as blocked verticals, I like to think about writing parts. As an organist, that just makes a lot of sense to me. Played a lot of Bach chorales in my day, let me tell you. Even though it is a chord progression, you can see that we have linear movement happening here between like the bass and the top part. And I pretty much stick to three or four parts. I don't ever go to big cluster chords or anything like that. 
because I want to leave space for the other elements to breathe around it. So let's listen to just the roads and the bass together. The pad is just doubling the roads. And then of course I just have this ARP happening which I just played in and have all kinds of weird modulation stuff, plucky stuff, changing the decay, all of that kind of stuff. It's not a sound design video so I'm not going to get too deep into that but I'm using the modulators here in Ableton to create some interesting things with the Collision plugin in Ableton. <laughs> For our next step in subtractive arrangement, we have interesting parts that work well together. And now we simply duplicate a lot of times. And we're done. So thanks as always for watching. So now we have a lot of loops. Looping into infinity, that gets boring pretty fast. But what if I did something like this? Doop -a doop boop bop. Beep. Let's take out the pads for a while. I don't want melody through any of this. No descant. I might bring in the descant before the melody. That might be interesting. You might want to get a general sense of the overall arc of the piece this way. Typically, if we're using the golden ratio of whatever, the climax is going to be somewhere over in here, right? So like in the towards the latter half of the piece, then it might taper away at the end of the piece again and just leave, I don't know, maybe the elements that we had at the beginning. But very clearly you start to see the subtractive element of this, just starting with a rich set of layers and stripping them down. You could actually split these eight bar loops up into four bar loops and experiment with swapping things around. You could swap the order of the melodic idea. I don't know, I mean, they're, they're your loops. You do whatever you want with them. For instance, I think I'm going to bring the ARP in here. The desk out here. So it doesn't have to be this straightforward. You could try things like, for instance, what if I shifted the melody, I'm actually going to shorten this and shift it over here. Let's see what that sounds like. back in line. Lots of things to try. This gives you a great starting point, just a playground to experiment. If you look at any of my sessions, they will not be quite this measured out because I, I like doing things in weird time signatures and, you know, patterns of seven and five and things that are odd, but you will see a lot of muted clips exactly like you see here, where I just go through and, and mute stuff taking stuff out sometimes reveals all of the other interesting stuff that you can easily bury just by adding more stuff constantly. By the way, if you want all of these assets, like the loops themselves from this example, they are available to download inside my composition course where I talk about subtractive arrangement, among other things that we've talked about here, including how to write melodic ideas and linear harmony writing. I have both the audio loops printed out and the MIDI available for you if you want to use your own sounds to experiment with. This is a track from my 2022 album, somewhat the same, called Kept. And as you can see, I've clearly deleted 
some stuff. Definitely some subtracting going on. A lot of this was just to carve out space because this track is pretty rhythmic, especially for the kind of music that I typically make. So I was trying to create some space and some room for all of the transients to exist together. So everything wasn't happening all at once. But I still started from the middle. I started with all of these parts kind of built up at the climax, and then I moved outward as I kind of demonstrated in the first example. So at the climax, it sounds like this. And if we go back to the beginning of the track, you'll hear elements of that that I've pulled out and run through tape loops because I, I, that's just what I do. And you can hear these arps kind of coming and going that exist in the climax. piano part, more isolated. Guess what? When we get to the end, it thins back out. So you get the idea that everything kind of spawned off of that original biggest moment in the entire track. What I've done here is primarily go in and remove stuff, take stuff out. You can see where I've removed entire parts that I decided I just didn't like. They cluttered things up too much. Like I originally had uh, the DFAM doing some percussive stuff over here. But I found that it actually interfered with the percussiveness of the mechanical action of the piano, which I had miked so close that you could hear all of those clickety clacks. And I actually preferred that being brought out to be the more rhythmic element in this particular section. So you can really hear that interplay happening in all of these ARP parts. Like when I get over here, One interesting thing that I really like to do is to create some sort of a through line, usually with a melodic idea, so something that can span over all of these different loops, right? It's sort of the narrative that gives us the story, the emotional story of the piece, and I gave another example of a track that I wrote using the same subtractive arrangement style that also incorporated a more melodic idea than this one in this video here, if you'd like to check that one out. <laughs> 